All right. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. I just uh, watched your guys' debate. That was pretty good. Thank you. Um, all right. So, uh, I've never done a debate before, so this is my first time, so bear with me. You'll be teaching me at the same time, probably, which is great. That's the best part about a debate is what you learn. I 100% agree. So um, I'll just start off with, uh, you know, basically what the title is. Um, conservatism is rooted in the fear of change, while progressivism is in the, rooted in the need for change. This is why progressivism is superior and a must for evolution. And I plan to tackle this by both definition, philosophy, social and cultural, as well as biology and psychology, if we can get to it. Sound good? That's fine. All right, so I will, I'll just start with definition. So the definition of evolution by Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary defines evolution as a process of continuous change from a lower, simpler, or worse to a higher, more complex state, a process of gradual and relatively peaceful social, political, and economic advance. So essentially, uh, evolution is a continuous amount of changes happening over and over and over again that creates something that's more complex and new. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So let's define uh, conservative. Um, Dictionary.com, they're all essentially the same, but dictionary.com defines conservative as a person who is averse to change and holds to traditional values and attitudes, typically in relation to politics. So they have an adverse uh, feeling towards change. So they're essentially against it, um, or at least fearful of it. Um, whereas progressives is defined as favoring or advocate, advocating progress, change, improvement, or reform, as opposed to wishing to maintain things as they are, especially in political matters, making progress towards conditions, employing, employing or advocating more enlightened or liberal ideas, new or experimental methods, etc. Now, I'm sorry that conservative was a longer definition, but they were both taken from dictionary.com and they were copy and pasted, so. <laughs> um, but can we agree to those definitions? No, I do not agree with the conservative definition. All right, I will leave the floor to you. So we, we typically talk about conservatism, and it's, it's rarely ever defined in some legitimate manner because we have conservatism of European nations. We have conservatism in the United States, and conservatism in the United States isn't the same that it was 100 years ago, right? So w when I talk about conservatism, it's, it's really classical liberalism is what I'm conserving, right? I'm conserving uh, the political tradition devoted to individual freedom founded by Locke, Montesquieu, Madison, Kant, Burke, Tocqueville, and Mill, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what conservatism is in the United States. Uh, mm -hmm. And I would, I would lean on other uh, intellectuals to agree with this, um, one would be Peter Berkowitz, another one would be Ben Shapiro, right? So they're famous uh, conservatives. But if you press them on traditionalism versus liberalism, they would say that they're liberal, right? They're classical liberal. So what conservatism is in the United States is the tradition of classical liberalism. And that is one of the main reasons why I took this debate. Because one, it's to get the idea out there that conservatism isn't this dry, bland, autocratic aristocratic view that we want what we want is is we want to conserve the traditions given to us by the classical liberal thinkers and that mm -hmm. is not in line with current progressivism today All right. mm -hmm. well okay so i mean essentially like this is actually another point uh that i wanted to bring up is no i'm going to hold off on to that one all right so Essentially, no, I have to bring this point up. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's look at the very idea of the United States of America. Now, I'm Canadian, 
so bear with me. Um, the United States was not founded on conservative ideas. Like you said, conservatives of today and a conservative of 100 years ago, right, are not the same thing. Uh, the conservatives uh, before the, like during the founding or the, uh, the colonizing of uh, North America and the United States, the conservatives would have been in favor of staying with the church and staying with the monarchy, right? That would have been the conservative views then. The progressive views would have been the liberal views of moving away from the church and moving away from uh, the monarchy. So, but at the time, a conservative of that time during the monarchy, right, would not necessarily have been a conservative 500 years before that. But their I idealism is still in sticking to tradition. So yes, you are sticking to the tradition of classical liberalism as what the United States was, but conservatism is still showing a lack of interest in changing what is, right? So essentially the definition remains the same that no matter where you are as a conservative, you're not wanting to change what is. Okay, give me one second. I'll be right back. No worries. I apologize for that. Still here? No worries. Yeah, yeah. I've seen your, uh, I've seen your debates before. I know you got a little girl running around too, so don't worry about it. Okay. All right. So, to that, uh, I want to say that that's a good turn, right? So you're trying to frame the debate as, as still the definition still stands. It's, it's an awesome point. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and you go and you're trying to bring back the relevance that they were progressives and at this time. But here's the thing. But when we talk about the, the progressive movement now and the conservative movement now, I want to try to frame this debate in, in current standings. So uh -huh. to some extent, I can't give you the historical reasons for why progressivism was superior, but I, I wouldn't even consider that at the time that they, were, that they were trying to be progress for progress sake. They were more in line with just having freedom for freedom's sake, where progress was a secondary uh uh, secondary or tertiary factor into what they wanted to do. Um, okay, so before we continue, I'm going to let you lay out some more points. Um, okay. Um, I'm not sure I understand stood that last chunk of what you said, but uh, yes, I was um, essentially coming at this debate in the sense that um, – so, how can I word this? I'm so much better at just like discussing things. Uh, <laughs> so, well, go ahead. Just make it a discussion. It doesn't have to be like I'm. I'm trying to dominate the debate form with uh, multiple contentions and evidentiary support and stuff like that. We can just have the good, con good discussion. Perfect. I love that. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. So, essentially, if we were to go back, if we were to go back into the time of the monarchy and the church in England and France and, and Spain and everything that was happening at that time, um, and we were to think it was a, an economy that was in chaos, right? It was uh, uh, a society that was in chaos. Um, and so there was a movement 
to progress away from the chaos. Now, in that, this one act of progress, right? Like it's much more than one act, but this progressive movement to travel across the ocean and to found a new land and a new system of of governance, um, and this idea, this idea of freedom. It, uh, oh shit, I lost where I was going with that. Right. So if that had not happened, we as a society here in the right, which includes technology, uh, includes like science and our understanding of things, uh, writing, the film industry, um, so many things that have come out of North America would not have happened had that progress not been made. Right. So regardless, nobody really knew what the outcomes were going to be, right? There was no way of determining that it was going to be successful. So there were people who were afraid to make the change. There were people who were adverse to making the change because if you make a change, you're going to ruin everything that is. Everything will fall apart. It's too dangerous. So had the progress not happened, we as society would not have evolved culturally or socially or even, you know, you could even argue genetically. Um, so progress, the progressive movement, the idea, the ideology of progress pushed the evolution of man. So had it been for conservatives at the time, there's no way of knowing, there's no way of knowing really, but we likely would not have progressed as far as we have in the time that we have, right? Right. So, well, so go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was going to make a statement. So a lot of Americans, America's achievements, again, uh-huh. it's, it's not rooted in progress. It's rooted in freedom. Right. So a lot of the progress that America made, we made by bringing in people from around the world. Right. So America typically doesn't have the strongest set of individuals within it. Right. So American IQ is not necessarily anything above that of it's, it's below China, it's below Japan, it's below Israel, it's below Finland, it's below... Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, Europe. I'm... Yes. Yeah, yeah, Most uh, Northern Europe, right? But we still progress faster than them. And, mm-hmm. and that's not because of we're looking towards progression. That is because of the freedom that was founded through classical liberalism that has mm-hmm. brought in people. Now, I get what you're saying about, like, if that at the time had not happened, the, the, the advancements made by America would not have been. Now, I disagree because, again, if we go back and look at where all of these great ideas came from, right? Nikola Tesla, he wasn't an American. Uh, he, and even if he – I'm not 100% sure if he was – I think he wasn't uh, – I think he was a national citizen, but I don't think he was an American uh, per se. Uh, Albert Einstein, uh, I think the, the last great mind of America, or at least second generation, if not first generation Americans, uh-huh. because we bring in other people. That's where we get our progress. It's not from, it's not from natural, natural born Americans, right? John von Neumann. Uh, I, think, I think we had Alan Turing. No, no, he wasn't American. He was British. He was British, so, yeah. Yeah. So... America's progress isn't really relegated to America itself. It's relegated in the idea of bringing in people from these other countries. So if we had to bring in all of these people, all of these advancements would have happened without America being progressed into it, what it is today. So these would have already happened. That, that's my point on that. Now, secondarily, when, when we come to the idea of what, what, what uh, we, we come back to the idea of pro- progress versus conservatism. Right. Uh-huh. There's many good arguments for why the conservatives believe what they believe. Now, these are uh-huh. based in psychology more so than they are in the economic or the cultural. Right. So if uh-huh. we look at it, you made the statement about the chaos. Everything over there was in chaos. I actually disagree. I say it was the exact opposite. One of the things that conservatism does is bring order to chaos. Uh, and we go back to the archetypal characters of, of, of humanity from the Jungian psychology. Right. The, the uh-huh. progressive and the liberal minded is in chaos. The conservative is in order. When you have too much order, you'll have problems. When you have too much chaos from, from the liberalism, you'll have problems. 
So really, it's, it's kind of the central statement, but the conservatism that I've outlined is a conservatism of centrality. So I want to conserve those traditions that have led to the progress of the United States. I, I mean, the progress of, of uh, the, uh, you know, uh, back to like John Locke and these things and, and, and being able to have a transcendental anchor and still have the freedom to go against the transcendental, transcendental anchor, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So looking at, let's, let's use the United States because, you know, you guys conquer our media. Um, looking at the United States, uh, as you had mentioned, um, the United States, the reason that it has been so successful in what it is, is because of immigration. But conservatives of today are against immigration. Um, you mentioned that uh, it was based in... you. So that was my point on that one. Uh, but there was another point, sorry. Is you had stayed, stated that you believe that... Um, the evolution of technology and so on and so forth would have happened uh, regardless of whether they had uh, broke from England. I disagree in the sense that it was breaking away from the church and offering freedom of religion that truly gave um, the, mo- the momentum for technology to advance. Um, if w- That's another thing is... The United States is based um, on the ideology of freedom of religion. Um, But conservatives of today in the United States of America are fighting to have a Christian-founded nation. So that goes against the classical liberal views of what the United States was founded on. Um, Being against immigration is going against the the liberal views of what the the United States was founded on. and the people in the United States uh, came from from everywhere, right? So, oh, this, this sorry, here's my point. Um, you had mentioned in your previous debate, do we not have um, a moral obligation to help those less fortunate than us? Um, do we not have to stop? Millions of people have, for, from dying so that our, your life cannot be, or so your life is not more convenient, is essentially what you said. Um, do you remember saying that? Yes. Um, conservatives in the United States right now are fighting that everybody is for every man for himself, and that you can't expect everyone to take care of everybody. But that goes against the fundamentals of what you just said, um, and as you uh, identifying as a conservative. So in that sense, your conservatism is actually going against the liberal conservatism of the United States' founding. So you're not actually trying to conserve the ideas of what America is. Right. So let's start off with immigration in the United States. Um, and each one of these point, point by point. Right. So current immigration in the United States, I'm – I'm actually not opposed to immigration, um, and, and most conservatives are not. Uh, so there's a lot of problems with conservatism today, and a lot of it comes from Trump, right? Or President Trump, I apologize, right? So I am not personally a giant fan of, of Donald Trump. I don't agree with everything he's done. I think probably the only good thing he's done so far is get Neil Gorish to uh, the, the seat at uh, the Supreme Court. Other than that, I don't necessarily agree with most of what he does, but I can sympathize with his positions, right? So when we bring in people from nations, Mm -hmm. brought in people from nations at other times, it was from predominantly European areas and predominantly hardworking cultures, right? Even from China, when we brought in people from China and Japan and things of that nature, they were hardworking, high-leveled IQs, right? One of the issues is it is not necessarily it, it coming from Mexico or South America. The issue is we need to be able to vet, vet this immigration into a level that we can understand who's coming in and what they're going to uh, give to the United States, right? Mm-hmm. 
Now, there, there's a lot more nuance to that than just simply that. Um, and the second you said breaking away from the church, right, that a lot of this wouldn't have happened. Well, you seem to forget that probably one of the greatest minds of our time was a big member of the church, Isaac Newton, the man who came up with calculus, and Leibniz was also a big member of the church and who wrote some of the original uh, works in apologetics that we still use today, the Leibniz uh, cosmological argument for explaining the existence of God, right? But they both were foundational to physics. Uh, I mean, they were both polymaths, not just physics, right? Physics, calculus, uh, some biology and things of that nature. So, and the church paid for these men to do what they did. And the church was not against science. That's, that's a completely lost thought to me because a, a good portion of what we knew about science from 16 to 1850 was produced by the church. Now, a lot of people will look back at some earlier time periods of uh, the church burning people and things of that nature, but the church, the church did some, some bad things. It did some good things, but overall the church did support science. Um, and next freedom of religion. Uh, you, you say that America is not about freedom of religion. Well, that's no, it you, is. It is. It is okay, about okay. freedom of religion. Right. So, but what I'm saying is, is you're stating that because of the, the, the Islam ban and things of that nature, that we're not for freedom of religion. But that's if you give Islam the statement of religion. I do not view Islam as a religion. I view Islam as a state and political and political belief just as communism right i do not want communisms in the united communists in the united states i do not want muslims in the united states specifically because it is a state and political movement that is against the classical liberal tradition right so it, when we frame it away from the idea that it's a religion and move it into a state and political activism we can understand why there is an issue Right? I don't want Sharia law in the United States. I don't want that to be a fundamental part of the United States because it completely impedes the idea of classical liberalism. And that's what we're guarding against. That's why I'm a conservative. I'm conserving that tradition. Um, and the last statement you made, uh, I can't really remember. Can you run that back to me? I don't remember either. Sorry. Uh, um, we, um, shit. <laughs> oh, 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 hold on. I remember. I remember. It was about my morality objection, right? So yes, that, yes. Okay. So yeah, I I want to help everyone in the world. I do. Um, I, not only did I join the military not to do like bad things, I joined the military to go to third world countries and to help people because that is a fundamental part of being in the military. You're 100 percent right on that. But that does not mean within my nation state I am forced to pay for other people and their wrongdoings. Now, if we have a third world country, that's that's a third world country, not for any other reason than they have low IQ and they can't take care of themselves in some manner. I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to helping them. I'm not opposed to helping that person in the United States. What I am opposed to is someone who can do better for themselves and choose not to because we've built a, we've built a system that incentivizes bad choices. You, you can't say that single motherhood is anything more than a choice. It, single motherhood is this rather new phenomenon that is that that encapsulates most of the crime, most of the drugs, and most of the murders, and, and most of the bad things in our society. And that's a fact. Seventy-five percent of uh, people within prison come from single mothers, and that's that's a huge problem. But that's not a problem. That's my fault. That's a problem out of choice. If you make a bad choice, that's on you to deal with. I've had to work my entire life for everything I've had. I'm a high school dropout. You know, Me too. I, <laughs> but I've worked. I've worked my entire life. I've worked to be a manager at a body shop. I, I left my body shop after being told I could own it in five years so I could join the army. I went out, I got my GED, I got my high school education, I went, I went back to school, I'm now finishing up my bachelor's degree, I've, I, I've already done an honors thesis, an honors work, obviously I've done multiple debate tournaments, Fed, found, Fed challenge team uh, work, and all of it because I've worked for it, not because anybody has given me anything. If we uh -huh. build incentives that get these people who can do better to not do better, that's a problem because they are not at maximum efficiency. They are not maximum capacity for what they can do. And I think any system that builds and takes away from them people to do the best that they can do, I find morally repugnant because I want progress. 
And if you incentivize things to not progress, you're not going to get progress. And that's why there's a distinction when it comes to nation states that have that have dictators, fascistic leaders that want to have a pornographic regime of murder versus somebody who doesn't want to work and thinks that they should be able to get welfare. That is a much, much different moral imperative there. And I want to make that absolutely clear. Okay. Let me, this, this is good. This is good. So I'm, I'm a high school dropout as well. I work very hard. But um, what you are somebody who is what what is the determining factor that you use to determine if somebody is able minded enough to do what it is that you have accomplished? That's that's a, that's um, that's that's the part that is missing in this uh, this this mindset um, towards. Uh, We'll, say, we'll call them the welfare, okay, just, just for the sake of it. Now, let's look at um, addiction, for example. It's a great example. Um, yes, it is absolutely a choice to pick up drugs. Absolutely a choice, 100%. But there seems to be an extremely strong correlation between depression and anxiety and childhood trauma that is connected to people who are more likely to pick up that and make that choice. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of science that's coming out that's that's also showing that we have far less self-control and free will than we think. Um, I wish I had more time to go over this, but it's fascinating stuff. And so our idea of, of what mental health, addiction, or uh, social stunting is right now is, is not a lot, but we're figuring it out, especially the more that we map the brain. And we're seeing actual differences in people's brains and their, their uh, physical structure and their chemical releases and everything, their neural pathways and how they're functioning within somebody who is diagnosed with a mental health disorder and somebody who's not, right? So being able to take in this new information uh, that science is coming out with, we're learning that it is not a black and white, well, this person can do it and this person can't do it. Um, and, or that this person's choosing not to do it and this person is choosing. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't people out there that, you know, completely fuck the system and will try and take advantage of it, nor am I not saying that there are people in the corporate world who are hardworking people but are still scamming the system regardless of how hard they're working to do it. Um, and so to to automatically say it's not fair for me to have to pay for somebody who can obviously do it because I can do it is an unfair statement because the reality is, is what we're learning is people's brains do not function the same. So you are an able-minded person, right? Some would massively disagree. So maybe, maybe emotionally and socially you got some fucked up shit, but I mean, you obviously, you can learn, you can follow instruction, you can, you can dream, you can uh, accomplish things. It means you have, a good structing brain that's doing shit. So it's unfair. Like it's like uh, cigarettes, for example, right? You can get mad at somebody and be like, well, it's your own fucking fault for picking up smoking. Why don't you just quit? But why aren't we talking about the guy who's making millions of dollars to make sure that every person who's smoking doesn't? Why is that person not put on trial? There is somebody who is actively working against smokers to make sure that they continue to smoke. But you only blame the smoker. As you said, that there is a system that's put in place to make people complacent. You know, they're like, well, I just, I've earned it. Just give me free money. But the reality is, is there is a system where you are, it is perpetually keeping people poor. 
it's not helping them. So the money is being misused, right? And so it's not, it's not that you are being forced to pay for somebody to get off their ass. It's that the money that you are being, that you are contributing is not being put to use properly. And that comes down to the government and that comes down to science. That also comes down to religion and its impact on the mental health community, right? So anyways, that's my point on that one. Um, if you're okay, I did have a second point. I am a foster kid. So Ooh. I was taken I'm, from my home. I'm it's, really sorry. It's all no, right. I, no, I have a serious problem with foster kids and CPS, but go ahead. So do you think that the foster system should be completely abolished and kids that are left in abusive homes should just be left there? Or do Man. you think that there should be a system that helps these children who are in a less fortunate state who can't help themselves? They, they can't possibly do it. Should Man. this system exist? <laughs> That's that takes a whole lot more than five minutes to rebut that because I'm going to be honest here in North America, uh, right? Child Protective Services, 80 percent of Child Protective Services are from parents who smoke weed. They're not for physical or sexual abuse. Right. And I think that if we look at it from a consequentialist standpoint, the, the children who come out of foster care tend to be far worse off than coming from abusive families, right? Uh, there's, there's a lot of problems. And I don't know about Canada, so I can't really talk about Canada. But I know here in North America, Child Protective Services should be abolished. And there should be a better system in place. Um, okay, so here's – okay, just let, me, just let me put this in, okay? Because this is – yes, there are people – there are mess ups in the system and there could be a mass mess up going on in the United States. I'll give you that. But let's just say for argument's sake that it's somebody like me. So I had an extremely abusive mother who beat me, you know, uh, sexually abused me, um, you know, a drug addict, an alcoholic, uh, moving around all the time, kept me from going to school. I didn't eat constantly in poverty, so on and so forth. Uh, and so when I came out, she threw me out a window. I hit my head. I went into a coma. I woke up. I was in foster care. So for, for just for me, right, do you think I would have been better off in that home? No. No, I don't. Okay. I... So let's say not for the kids who are just being taken away because their parents smoke weed, but for kids in this situation. A system should be in place for these people. Yeah. Okay. Now, the kids that are coming out of the foster care system are f making up most of the homeless community and the drug addict addicts. They're making yeah. up most of them. So is, that, is it the fault of the money that's being taken from you that these kids are ending up this way? Or is it that your money is not being spent properly and it's creating a bigger strain on the system? Right. So there's there's a lot of nuance into that. And I want to jump back for a second and talk yeah, about. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So I'm a classical liberal and, and I my name is a lot like Locke. And there is a fundamental reason why it's John Locke is kind of the, my go to classical liberal. And one of them is mental health. So he was one of the few classical liberals that talked about mental health and talked about the need for society through the social contract to take care of people who have low levels of mental health, right? Um, I, I took care of my aunt. I was seven years old when my aunt moved into my house. She is wheelchair bound and has the mental capacity of a five-year-old, right? That was a big strain on my family, but it was something my family took on. And without governmental help, we wouldn't have been able to do it. And I, and I, and I think that that was a great thing. And that's part of classical liberal tradition. So a lot of people point to classical liberalism as, as a neo-anarchist and things of that nature. It's not. One of the biggest problems in the United States is that people don't read classical liberalism and conservatism to the point that they should. They, they listen to rhetoric of Donald Trump or, or, or other individuals like that. But the actual, the actual works by John Locke talk specifically about helping people with mental with mental health disorders because i for one i you know 
I, I have friends that are in mental health institutions and that I think uh-huh. more people should be. I think the homeless population, they should be picked up and moved into mental health institutions and not like in a negative, like you go in there and electroshock therapy from the 1970s, but yeah. like really sit down and do behavioral and cognitive therapy for these people. And I think that the government and the people of the United States should fit that bill. I do. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't necessarily disagree with any of that. That's not outside of conservatism. That's not outside of classical liberalism. That may but be it outside. it's it's outside of Trump. And it's outside of capitalism. That's no. stepping into socialism now, right? That's no. a socialist. No, because see, this is what kills me about capitalism again. Like a lot of people don't necessarily understand what capitalism and socialism and those hierarchical statements mean, right? So uh-huh. in capitalism you can use the government to do a public good. If mental health is a public good, it is perfectly reasonable, even from hardcore, nah, not all of them, but hardcore capitalists like myself to say that it is within reason, a part of the social contract that we should do this. Mm-hmm. Right. So there are some like neo-anarchists, uh, the Austrians would probably be a, a bigger fit for your conversation, but on my side, the the Friedman Knights, the high, uh, uh, the Knights, uh, uh, those are famous classical liberal economists that are that are like the purveyors of capitalism. They agree with my position more than people think, and that's mm-hmm. specifically because people do not educate themselves on these issues and what classical liberalism, what modern conservatism is supposed to say. Um, and I do want to make a statement about this, uh, the child protective services. So yes, America. We should still take children away from bad parents, but we need to train people to do that. We don't have a trained force who does it. We have people with four-year degrees. They're not specifically in psychology, and they're not specifically in sociology. They're specifically in whatever they want, and they go through a 30-day training cycle to where Uh they, once they're done with that, they are a social worker, and that social worker has enough power in them to remove a child from the home without a court order Mm -hmm. and then force that child into psychological therapy. Mm -hmm. And those therapists are are using very bad tactics to Mm -hmm. manipulate these children. And I find all of that disgusting. And I think Mm -hmm. we need to upend it and redo it within Mm -hmm. line to help children who are in these bad cases. So then my question is, is how do we pay for it? No well, taxes. I'm not. I don't. I, if you ever hear a conservative say taxation is theft, he's just a libertarian who pretends to be a conservative because it's the modern viewpoint at the time. Okay. Conservatives don't go taxation is theft. Conservatives wholly and outright agree that there is a social contract, but at to what end there is now that may be a section of debate. Hmm. So. Um. So, like, within the United States right now, there's talk of lowering taxes. Um, as a, yeah, and so if this is this is difficult because I feel like your dis- your definition of an American conservative today, and you know, I'll say a, a super Republican uh, conservative of America seems to be uh, a bit different. Like you're in favor of taxation, but when I talk to, or when I, you know, watch conservatives, they're like taxation is the ultimate disgrace of freedom. You know, like you can't well, do is. that. Well, so it, it's a two, it's a two way story, right? So taxation is theft. I do agree that taxation is theft, but uh-huh. theft, theft is okay within reason. Right. And I gave you the reasons. And that's why I said John Locke really kind of laid out what I think is the central tenet. Uh, uh-huh. And for those who don't know, John Locke was the, the purveyors of what we now have as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. John Locke's works led to that. Um, mm. So within, within that realm, but what conservatism is today, there's, there's a huge divide, right? So there's like the Trumplican, Republican conservatives, and then there's like the, the Ayn Rand and the Austrian conservatives and the Libertarian and the Liberty Caucus, right? But hmm. there, there are good conservatives. I mean, Ted Cruz, for all intents and purposes, he's, he's probably one of the most hated men 
in Washington specifically because he espouses conservative beliefs and the uh-huh. right doesn't like him because he's not he's he's not hard enough on these cases and the left don't like him because he's not hard enough on these cases so he, he's really a solid centrist who devotes himself to capitalism which is what I am and there's others out there but mm-hmm. at the end of the day what conservatism is and what people try to promote it to be can be different no no they like what I mean like what you're describing, like this, this has gone like way off topic, because like what you're describing is an American conservative mm-hmm. who is fighting for the American liberal um, political system. Um, but a conservative is a word that goes um, outside of the United States. There's Canadian conservatives. There's, uh, you know, English conservatives. There's French conservatives. And so conservatism on its own has its own meaning right and so we've just we've gone through american conservatism which i think is great because i mean it's a it's a current topic and stuff um and i think we got way off point but in in the sense uh i feel like i mean if you believe in science so taking in new information and building off of it and progressing the people, do you, is that something that you would aspire to believe in? I am a scientist, yes. So there you go. So you believe in progress, so which means it requires changes here and there. There will be changes that happen that have happened. Like if you go back, um, I think it was like 1777 or something was the first kind of it wasn't called the Constitution, but it was kind of the first Constitution, and then it changed, and then there was another change that was made to the Constitution with the 13th Amendment, uh, and then voting rights changed, and then, you know, you, you have, like, would you say that the civil rights movements and these changes that have happened in the United States have been for the better of the United States? Some, but not all. Civil rights movement, yes. Women's suffrage, no. I'm actually opposed to women having the vote. I'm actually opposed to men having the vote without owning property. And that includes myself because I'm not a property owner. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, aside from that one, but the civil rights movement. So that was, that was a big change into how the United States was, right? So we, you believe in science and technology and you believe in, you know, the previous civil rights move, some of the previous civil rights movements of the United States. So you are, in a sense, only a conservative leaning centrist because you have progressive views and you have progressive ideas and beliefs. Um, right? Yeah. So before we finish up, I do want to say if we, it, 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 next time, we should have this discussion again. Next time, I'm going to go into pragmatism. And so mm-hmm. what pragmatism basically states is that, uh, you know, you talk about science and progress, right? So what is sufficiently true to be considered progress? And, and I would state that some progress is sufficiently not true enough, mm-hmm. so to speak. So there are reasons why conserving traditions and these things should be uh, handled in a much better way, uh, specifically with with regards to uh, patriarchy, I'm a member of the patriarchy. I find that the patriarchy does promote a better system for uh, for this species. Mm-hmm. So, but that's what I'm saying. So we'll build on that for pragmatism next time. But thank you so much for the debate. I had a blast. Yeah, it was it was good. Thank you uh, so much, and uh, you know, uh, thank you for being a soldier. You're not a soldier for my country, but we're an ally. So thank you, um, and you know, best of luck. Thank you so much. Cheers.